Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560. It's com- Oh, excuse me. It's coming Mother's Day. I'm so excited. So treat the mom in your life to a very special Mother's Day brunch at the Trump Hotel in Chicago. You know the date. Sunday, May 12th. Enjoy a buffet-style feast with live entertainment and complimentary champagne while seated along the city skyline for a chance to win tickets. 560theanswer.com, keyword mother. 560theanswer.com, keyword mother, and good luck. Uh, so the, we got this guy at, um, I guess it's either the Columbia or if there was an encampment at NYU. I'm not sure which encampment, but he's in New York. And, uh, you know, it's smart and uh, funny. And uh, uh, ridicule is a powerful tool against the ignorant. So he dresses up like Moses and he... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he dressed, he's dressed up like Moses. Did you tweet this out, by the way? Uh, I will. Okay. Uh, Let my people go is the theme here. And he um, uh, goes up to people yeah. and just asks them a simple question. And uh, depending on their response, he has a response. This is, uh, this is, you know, a good way to go about this. I like this guy. Hello, I'm Moses, and welcome to Let My People Go, the game show. Let's play. Do you think Hamas should release the hostages? I think that the Zionist entity... Oh, so it. sorry, man. It was an unequivocal yes, I need it. I have frogs for you. It's one of the plagues. What are your guys' names? Sir. Chuck. Should Hamas release the Israeli hostages? How about you? I'm So you guys say no? No. Well, I'm so sorry, then. This Passover, all I can offer you guys is hail. Got Will it. you call on Hamas to release the hostages? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Then all I can offer you is water turned into blood. Do you think Hamas should release the Israeli hostages? I don't know about that, man. I can still offer you a prize. Lice? Do you think Hamas should release the hostages? No, no. Uh, all I have then is a plague, blindness, darkness, sleep at night. Will you call on Hamas to release the Israeli hostages? Hmm. Why do you think they took hostages? I think they took hostages because they're a terrorist group that want to kill Jews because that's what they've said in their charter. You think maybe the only thing they've ever been shown is hostility and violence? Did you guys know that Israel left Gaza in 2005? Not that up to date with that history. All I can offer you guys is locusts. Amazing. Are they real? <laughs> Moral of the story, Jews have been persecuted for over 3,000 years. We always survive and usually make a holiday out of it. Let's let our people go. Back to Israel. It was funny, and and he's got uh, all the different, uh, you know, like he's got like plastic frogs for the plague, and he's got it's it's good. It's very creative. I like it. I like it. Um, it's one way to do it, and uh, to expose the ignorance, as you heard at the end, and but also to expose uh, the actual views. So you have people saying at these at this encampment in New York, all these young people, college students. Um, no, uh, I, I, I don't support the release of hostages. Do they even know that five of them are Americans? I, I'm sure they don't, but it's just, uh, it's just incredible. Some of the things that we're hearing from the mouths of these babes out there, aren't we? Uh, something else too. I mean, just how next level this is going. And I mean, our culture generally Amherst, Massachusetts, and this could be Wilmette, this could be Hinsdale, River Forest. It would get the same response. There's a new iteration of um, Drag Queen Story Hour. Palest- free, uh, uh, free Palestine Drag Queen Story Hour. Oh. Not kidding. How Valley oh. Families for Palestine Drag Queen Story Hour in Amherst, Massachusetts. Listen to this. From the dude parading as a woman in front of uh, parents with their t- basically toddlers. Okay, gross, but I want to hear it. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to shout Free Palestine. Can I hear that? Free Palestine! If you're a drag queen and you know it, shout Free Palestine! If you're a drag queen and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're a drag queen and you know it, shout Free Oh my God. Well,
Well, does that drag queen know that if that drag queen showed up in Gaza were in that, they would throw said person off of roof? Uh, so, a nice twofer there. You have the uh, promotion of uh, radical Islamist terrorism and uh, gender identity, nonsensical gender identity politics. It's a, it's a wonderful twofer. It covers a lot of turf. For more on all of this, uh, because the college campuses are ground zero, as we've been discussing the last several days, Scott Walker joins us. He's the president and CEO of Young America's Foundation, of course, former two-term governor of Wisconsin and former presidential candidate. Uh, governor Walker, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to be with you. Good, good morning. We, we were just uh, hearing from Peter Schweitzer, the uh, obviously New York Times bestselling author, another book out called blood money but peter is a alum of yf and uh, we just heard from him last night again and he talks about how you know what this all ties together to the chinese communist party because their attempt to attack us to declare war on us is not to declare war but to fund things like this transgender nonsense that we see here in america but not in china uh, to fund things like the problems we have at the border and the fun things like the social media division that we have that drives students to not even know what they're talking about. I mean, for goodness sake, they're so intimidated in those debates or in those uh, riots and protests that they can't, they can't even acknowledge what most human beings would say was an obvious answer, which, of course, they should release the uh, right. hostages. The weirdest thing with all of this is you know, one of the guys with the most clarity on this issue, apparently you just got to go to Walter Reed to get clarity, is... Senator John Fetterman, who's yeah. right on the money, at least when it comes to Hamas and, and Israel these days. Who would have thought? And why isn't President Biden, I mean, he's had so many campaign appearances. Why doesn't he talk about it while, you know, he's got the, the chance to? Well, you saw why the other day. I mean, for goodness sakes, he was with AOC, you know, talking about this on Earth Day about climate stuff. They asked him, and, and he pulled the very thing that they – tried to mock Donald Trump on uh, years ago back in Virginia. He, he, you know, there are good people on both sides. Remember, I mean, that's essentially what he said was that, uh, you know, uh, he made some lame defense of, of uh, extremism at one point and then said, but, you know, there are good people on the other side. But those weren't his exact words. But it's because he doesn't know what he thinks. He, his instinct was to be protective of Israel because that's where he had – most Democrats were for the last 40, 50 years, as well as Republicans. Um, obviously, our greatest ally in the area, in, in the Middle East, the only democracy in the Middle East. And yet, he knows that with some extreme younger voters, and certainly with some voters in a key state like Michigan, they're somehow not just against Israel, but somehow aligned with Hamas. And so <clears throat> they're in such a bind in these polls, not just nationally, as your news just related to, but particularly in battleground states like mine, that they're willing to abandon all that um, and even undermine. Imagine this for a second. So there, you got him, you've got Chuck Schumer and others uh, undermining uh, the leader of, of Israel less than six months since they had their own 9-11, or actually arguably worse percentage-wise attack. Can you imagine Tony Blair doing that to George W. Bush? Uh, back in 2001, 2002. I mean, this is this is how they've just politically sold their souls. Yeah, but um, they're not politically naive. And the frightening thing is that they think what they're doing is in their political interest to do so. It's a it's a terrible commentary on where America is. Well, I hope people are waking up. I mean, we've seen college campuses aren't just liberal. There's not just a left wing bias. There's outright radicalization on, on our campuses and. We've been saying this for years, but I hope the images uh, at Columbia, but now all over the country, are, are just a vivid reminder, not only why we're on campus. Oddly enough, we, we set kids out along with the, our kids and the college Republicans. We helped put up flags, as we've done the last six months, uh, flags, uh, Israeli flags, in representation of each of the hostages were taken, just like every year mm -hmm. the last two decades we put up American flags to represent those who were innocently killed in 9-11, and not just to remember that, remember who did it, why they did it, um, and that's something that nobody's, or since nobody, hardly any are being taught out there. But it's also why it's not enough to just be on college campuses. We're, we're going younger. We've been in high school. We just started middle school. In fact, in about well, less than two weekends, we'll, we'll be in Dixon 
uh, Ronald Reagan's Boy at Home. In fact, if folks are interested, yaf.org, yf.org slash events. We're doing another one of our middle school programs because we got to start younger and start getting the word out sooner so that people don't wake up one day and say, how do my kids and my grandkids end up being one of these radicals on the campus? Well, sure. I mean, you just heard the uh, free Palestine drag queen story hour with kids that are maybe not even kindergarten age. I mean, so that's where that's where these uh, cultural Marxists uh, are. I mean, they start uh, they start at the beginning, which is uh, the right place to start. I wanted to get your reaction, though, too, just on the second on the uh, issue of college. Trump's uh, announcement this week that, uh, you know, his plan for the colleges uh, do, you know, deport uh, people on student visas who are hate mongers on campus, and then accreditation and endowments. Uh, use the Department of Education's oversight powers with respect to college accreditation agencies and tax uh, these endowments of these uh, these uh, you know mutual funds masquerading as colleges, like in the Ivy League. Well, money talks. I mean, that's it. I, 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 if there was any mistake, and you know the record I had in Wisconsin, how aggressively we took on the unions, the civil service, the uh, out-of-control bureaucracy, all those sorts of things. The one thing I regret, and we did do things with tenure and free speech, but that we should have done even more uh, on the University of Wisconsin system. And I think that's the key around the country. Governors, lawmakers, at least in states where they're willing to do that, should take action. I think the Department of Education, I think anybody, I think people listening, you give to your alma mater and your alma mater teaches students these days to hate you, hate the things you stand for, pull the money and tell them why. I think it's finally time that we've got to take action. I don't just think it's, it's, it's not even just that they're not getting a good education, particularly in these so-called Ivy League schools. They're actually getting a re-education. They're, they're, it's not just that it's not good stuff they're getting. They're being told and taught and pushed to do stuff that, that is fundamentally at odds with core American principles, not necessarily Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative, just core American principles. So I think we do need to push back. The other piece of good news, and we do polling quite frequently of college as well as high school students. Nationwide, despite what you see in the media, college students' number one issue is the economy. And college students agree with us on a lot of things. They, they don't think boys should be competing in, in women's sports. They don't think enrollment or even employment should be based uh, on, on race. There's a lot more college students who have some sense of common sense than you would perceive, but they're intimidated, as are some of their educators, and we got to push back. That's what we do at Young America's Foundation. YF.org, if people are feeling under attack, we got you back. Uh, what do you think, I mean, just uh, talking about Wisconsin being a swing state and you knowing it so well, obviously, um, and it also seems to be sort of the weakest of the swing states for Trump in terms of where he is, uh, you know, ha- is having the most problems shaking Biden, at least at present. Um, what, if anything, uh, does Trump need to be doing that he's not doing to position himself better in Wisconsin? Well, I think the best thing, this applies nationwide, but it particularly is true in Wisconsin. Um, you know, you've got traditional big cities, uh, not something like the proportion Chicago versus the rest of Illinois, but, but Wisconsin, it's big city, Milwaukee. Uh, next big city is Madison, although Madison is like Berkeley. I mean, it's way, way out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got the rural areas are traditionally more Republican, with a few exceptions. And you've got the suburbs, and then in between the swings areas are kind of mid-sized industrial cities. Trump actually does well there, as I did as, as well. But where he's underperforming in the past, at least in the 2020 election, was in the suburbs. Suburbs go Republican, but you need to up the numbers. To the extent that he can make the case that, yeah, he's a fighter, never going to change that, nor should he. But he's got to be a fighter for you. He's got to be a fighter for the voter. He's got to be a fighter for the forgotten. If he's perceived as a fighter because he just likes to fight, that turns off a lot of suburban, so-called college-educated uh, voters, not just women, but men as well. That's where when he, he, not only when he comes to Wisconsin, but just overall, to the extent that he can show, which he has in the past and which he is, a fighter for the forgotten, a fighter for the people who are frustrated with Washington, a fighter who says, you know, people can say, I, I'll, I'll overlook some of the tweets or comments because he actually gets the job done, unlike a lot of politicians who go to Washington and talk but don't deliver. He needs to be that person, that leader. I think there's a lot of suburban voters who are willing to give up an occasional tweet they don't care for 
in return for some sort of stability when it comes to the economy, the border, and overall public safety. He is Scott Walker, former governor of Wisconsin, presidential candidate, now the president of Young America's Foundation. And again, yeah, the event is uh, the middle school expedition at the Reagan Boyhood Home, Reagan Resilience Challenge in uh, uh, Dixon, obviously. That's next week, May 3rd and 4th. I have that right. Yes, Scott? Yeah, it's exactly right. Love to have folks come on in. And uh, like we've had great programs for college and high school students, it's a lot of fun. We just had a group out at the Reagan Ranch. This is at the Reagan Boyd Home, uh, yaf.org, yf.org slash events. Well, we'd love to have folks come with their with their middle schoolers. It can be parent, grandparent, family member. Come and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very good, yeah. And if you haven't seen Re- uh, Reagan's Boyhood Home, that's, uh, cool. that's, a, that's a requisite to be a, a Land of Lincoln resident, I, I would say. Uh, Scott yeah, Walker, absolutely. thanks. Scott Walker, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Bye now. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy using the AM560 mobile app. Download it today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter. Signature Bank knows your name and your story. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my business bank.